Alright, in this video, this is going to be a tutorial on the for loop inside of your custom app, whether that be KOWP, KWGT, or KLOCK. I have yet to do a tutorial on the for loop, but I've actually used the for loop quite a bit in this upcoming tutorial on notification badges. There's a few quirks I have to work out, but I did have to use the for loop in order to make this work. A little preview of the notification badges, I just have five random ones up here. This is my security system, Facebook, Gmail, Calendar, and Twitter. Now some of the perks of notification badges here, if I were to open up my security notification by clicking here, it's going to open up that notification for that specific app. Not only that, once we close out of it, that notification badge is gone. I can come over here to Twitter, tap on it, it opens up that specific notification, and then when we exit out, that notification badge is gone. Some of the bugs I'm working out are the Google Calendar app. Notice I do have two Google Calendar notifications. However, it just shows one. Now I can still open that notification up, close out of it. It did get rid of one of the notifications down here. Still says one, I can click on it again. There's the other notification, close it. The badge is gone and now you can see that we have no notifications down here for the calendar. That's one of the bugs. I think that is specific to the Google Calendar app. The same thing applies to Gmail, that's a little bit wonky too. But anyway, the for loop, that's what I want to talk about in this tutorial. Now I have a component available in my free components folder, it's called for loop notifications. But to introduce you to the for loop, I'm just going to start with the blank preset. Inside of this blank preset, let's go ahead and add some text. Taking that text, making the size a little bit bigger so you can see it. And let's go ahead and add that for loop, the FL function. And I'm just going to add this first one here by holding down. So what does all of this junk mean? Notice we have one, two, three, four, five spots. These are separated by commas. This first spot here is the initial value. And let's refer to that as the letter I. This is where we're going to stop. So we're going to go from five to 20. But how do we go from five to 20? Do we go five, 10, 15, 20? Do we go five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, all the way to 20? That's what this third spot will tell you. So our variable I, we're going to increment it by one. So we're going to go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and as you can see, that's exactly what's getting returned. But how are we printing this out? This fourth spot determines what's getting printed out. We're going to print out just that value I, that variable I. And then this optional spot right here at the end, this is our separator. Notice we have a space between all of these. Now, for example, I can come in here to that space, I can delete it, and now it's all scrunched together. I can come put a minus in between them, and now we have a minus in between them. So this is your separator. So we're printing out 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 20, and I'm just going to put that space back there for less distraction. Now, suppose we wanted to print out this variable plus another word. So let's say uh, we want to print out the word text after that number. Well, that messes things up, right? What we have to do is come in here and put a plus in between these values. So now we have the variable, and then we're going to add on the word text to that variable. So notice we have five text, six text, seven text, etc. Now you may say, okay, well we have some spaces in here, but why do we not see spaces? This is where the text converter function can come in handy. There's this thing called UTF. That stands for Unicode Transformation Format. And if you go to utf8-chartable.de, you can get a chart of all of these codes. And the codes that we want to use are going to be this column right here, the utf8 hex. So all of these right here. And what we want to do is we want to use the space. It has a code of 20. So check this out. So if we go to our TC function, text converter, and then we have this utf piece right here. I'm going to insert that into my code. And what we don't want to use in the for loop are these quotation marks. We can get rid of those. Let's put in the 20 for that space code, but now we don't see anything. Well, guess what we have to do? We have the variable, plus we want to see a space, plus we want to see the word text. So what I have to do is come back in here and put a plus. Now we have five text, six text, seven text, etc. But now we have that space in between the number and the word text. Perfect. And maybe it's a good idea now, instead of us putting a space in between each piece of this for loop, let's actually put a enter, a line return. And now we can have each one of these on a separate line. Maybe we don't want to go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 20. Maybe we want to go 5, 10, 15, 20. Well, let's try I plus 5. 
5 text, 10 text, 15 text, 20 text. It ends at 20. Maybe we want to end at 25, so we can add a 25 there. What you want to be careful with, though, is when you're messing with this for loop, you want to make sure you can start and end at this value based on this increment we have here. For example, if I did I plus 15, look at what happens. 5, 20, 35, 60. It's incrementing by 15, but we never hit that 25. So technically what's going to happen here, this thing goes on forever and we don't want that. So a little warning there, make sure you can start and end on that specific value. I plus four will work fine because we go five, nine, 13, 17, 21. And if I save this, we end at 25 by adding four. So that works just fine. But now let's take this one step further. Let's actually get all of our notifications at one time in a list using the for loop. And to show you that, I'm going to use for loop notifications, this component here. Again, that's in my free components folder. Now there's a lot of junk inside of here. I don't want to go over all of this stuff yet. I'll talk more about that in detail as we do the notification badges, but I do want to show you how I'm getting this list of notifications. It will change every time you get a new notification. So inside of that component, I'm going to head to the stack group. And the one that I want to show you here is this stack group here. And then let's go to the second text item. Opening that text up, we have a lot going on here. But I want you to pay attention to the for loop. Don't worry about the if stuff right now. Let's just focus on the for loop. We had the for loop right here. So I'm going to enter that down. And I want you to focus your attention on the for loop. So the for loop, we're going to start at zero. Now, why do we start at zero? Zero is going to be the index of the first notification that you have in your notification shade. It starts with the index of zero. So we want to start at zero and the NI count function. That tells you how many notifications you have that you are able to cancel. Not persistent notifications, but the ones that you can cancel. So I'm going from zero and I'm gonna go up to the number of notifications that I have that I can cancel minus one. The reason why, for example, if you had 17 notifications that you could cancel, the indexes of those would go from zero to 16. Think about that. Suppose you had 20 notifications that you could cancel the index would go from zero to 19. So NI count minus one. How do we want to increment this for loop? I plus one. So we'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to the number of notifications that we have that we can cancel minus one. That's what that I plus one means. What do we want to print out? I want to print out my variable. As you can see, zero, one, two, three, four. Then I want to put a space in there. That's that text converter UTF 20. Plus I want to print out whatever the app is for that particular notification. But notice here, notification information, I'm using that variable I in there. So whether it be zero, one, two, three, four, five, that's going to be that index. Comma app, that will return the app name. You can see YouTube, Gmail, 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 etc. Plus another space, that's the UTF 20. Now notice UTF2D. That's going to be a hyphen or a minus symbol. Notice the UTF2D is the hyphen or the minus. Plus, after that hyphen, I want to put another space. So UTF20 plus notification information, that variable I in our for loop, comma package. So I'm getting the package name. So let's look at this and make sure we understand what this for loop is doing. Again, don't worry about the if part. So what's this zero? That zero is going to be that variable I, the index of my notification. We have a space, the UTF-20. Notice the space between zero and the word YouTube. Well, where is YouTube coming from? The app name. Plus another space. Notice we have a space between the E in YouTube and our hyphen. Plus the hyphen. That's the UTF-2D. That's what we have right there. Plus another space, UTF-20 plus the package name of that particular notification. As you can see, that's exactly what we have right there. Now, why am I throwing an if statement into this? Because if our count, our count of notifications that we can cancel is equal to zero, if you don't have any notifications and you didn't put this part of the code in there, it's gonna print out something crazy. So basically, we want to dodge this for loop altogether. If the number of notifications that we have that we can cancel is equal to zero, we simply want to print out nothing here. And it's not going to do this for loop because of the standard if statement. If this, then that. 
And one last thing about the for loop though, notice I am doing a line return. That's what I'm doing from here to here inside of those quotations. That's how I'm getting a new line for every single notification. So let's check on that. Let's save it. Heading back to the home screen and notice a few things. So my first notification that I can cancel was a YouTube. Let's check that out. There's the YouTube one right there. I cannot cancel this notification here because it is persistent. However, I can cancel this YouTube one. Let's do that. Notice the YouTube's gone. Oh, lo and behold, a notification popped up for my calendar, so that's going to be the first one. Notice I do have a one up here too. Again, that's coming in the future. But there's the prep for New Year's. Cancel that. I'm going to cancel all my Gmails. Let's see what happened. So a lot of things went away. The only notifications I have left that I can cancel are the Amazon Shopping, Dex for PC, and the Google one. Let's see those. There's the Amazon Shopping, Samsung Dex, and then I had this Google one down here with the weather, and I can cancel that. All of these others are persistent notifications. And as you can see, it does say nothing here. Don't worry about this word none. I didn't go over that part. You may have noticed some Y's and some N's. I have not talked about that in this tutorial. That will come when I start talking to you about the notification badges, which we will see in the future. And as you can see right here, this is where I have a bug with Gmail. I've canceled all of those Gmails, but yet it still shows three. That's something I'm going to have to figure out. But for now, I hope that does kind of clear some things up with the for loop. A lot of possibilities you can really do with the for loop. Printing out lists and all that good stuff. But there you have it, a tutorial on the for loop inside of your custom app. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.